Anyway, let's take a look inside this thing. Um, I don't particularly like the tilt-in bale. It just like comes out every time you've got to dick it around to put back in. They do have metal threaded insert though, but uh, the screw comes out, just flies out, so it's easily lost. Uh, the two AA batteries, you need your bloody AA batteries to at least get your pissant 50, you know, 60, 70 hour battery life or whatever it is you might get out of this thing. Anyway, let's crack it open. There's no fuse access, of course. You wouldn't expect it. And here's where you might want to switch to uh, 4K mode down here in the corner um, so you can see all the detail. Um, let's have a look. I don't mind that little uh, riser board there for the uh, current. That's pretty good. You can see how it's got the split jack and it's actually sensing uh, those off so I can do that auto detection there. No worries. Um, two little M205 uh, HRC fuses there. Not branded at all. So, meh. Okay, well, they're better than a little piss ant glass fuse. There's our little uh, 10 amp current shunt. Isn't it a little piss weak? Look at that. A um, couple of melts in there. Oh, geez, I tell you what. They're filled in the ground plane. Look at that. That's pretty close to your voltage input jack. That's like you want to peel back the ground plane. Why have that close? I don't. I don't understand that at all. I think that's probably too close, but this thing, yeah, I, I forgot to mention. It's only like, just like the 8008, it's 600 volt Cat 3, but it's not independently tested or rated or anything like that. Um, okay, we've got a couple of more MELFs. You know, I'm a bit of a MELF fanboy. But apart from that, where are the, where's the PTC protection? Where are the MOVs on there? We've got ourselves a diode. <laughs> yeah, good on ya. And here's the interesting thing. We've got ourselves a relay. Look, it's a big, proper ass relay in there, and it goes clunk when you power it on. Wait, no. Is that our PTC? That could be our one and only PTC, is it? Ah, oh, okay. It's better than nothing. Anyway, we've got ourselves the black blob there. What else? Look at this beastie. There, yes, they have rubbed the numbers off that. Look at that. They have completely erased from existence. Got ourselves an E-squared prom there with some pretty crusty soldering. I'll get the macro lens out and show you. And there's our ICL uh, voltage reference. What's that one? I could use my new 4K zoom. I'll zoom into that and see what we get. Because that's one of the advantages of having a 4K camera. Not necessarily that, you know, people are going to watch in 4K, but at the, the editing stage, it allows me to, like, zoom in on teardowns and stuff like that in the editing process if I see something interesting. Because once again, I do all this on the cam's quarter screen, right? So even though this is a really excellent cam quarter screen, it's 1440 by 1080, like, you know, I, I really can't it's small and I can't see it three and a half inch I can't see really good detail on that so often in teardowns when I go to the editing stage I'll notice something and go aha I want to zoom in so if 4k it allows me to uh, you know zoom in really well just gives me the extra resolution and well what else is there like the jacks they're just mere par for the course on these things um, as I said the ones down in there are split you can see that hopefully um, yeah but that's all she wrote you know, mysterious micro here, um, we've got our chipset here, our fake bar graph, and uh, do those solder joints look a bit pasty or what? What's the deal there? And if we get the board out, there you go, that was a struggle, but you can see the uh, split jacks down in there. Check out these joints here. Look at those ones. Dry as a dead dingo's donger. Unbelievable. Wow, Frosty the Snowman. Check out the joint in there. Let's just put a lead on the other side. It's almost like an afterthought. <laughs> and aha, uh -huh, if you have a look at the data sheet for this Hongfar uh, relay, then it's actually a latching type, which of course makes sense because you don't want to be pissing away uh, the current on the coil when you power this thing up. So you latch it on, it stays on, and then when you uh, remove and then it doesn't consume any power to keep the coil uh, energized. So and aha, uh -huh, starts to make a bit more sense if you actually get rid of the battery uh, cover here, which was hiding some of the uh, traces. I thought it was originally coming from here, and this trace was going under to here to the relay, but it's not. If you follow the money directly, this is the uh, voltage input here. There you go. Directly right over to the one contact of the relay there. So there you go. It's definitely switching the volts input directly. So I was actually uh, a bit confused by this. I thought, uh, you know, where does the other side of the contacts go? Because this is the common pin of the relay here. Here's the input 
come in you can see that comes directly from the input there so there's nothing else connected Look, nothing behind the curtain there. So um, by default, there is no, uh, the PTC is on the switched side. Here's the PTC there between those two pins. There's absolutely nothing on the other contact. So all they're doing with that relay, the latched relay, that's why it's got two coils there. You can switch it one way or the other, then it just stays there um, to reduce your power consumption. So we've got two distinct paths here. Uh, one that goes via these melt resistors here in series. These are high value resistors so it really uh, limits the current. That seems to go directly in here. I haven't followed that trace, but it completely bypasses the relay up here um, and, and the PTC here. Now, the other path is directly from the jack here, which snakes the way, its way around. That goes into uh, one contact of the relay, and the only, place, the only function of this relay is to switch that direct input in and out and the out of that when it is switched in it goes directly to the ptc here through the ptc and that trace goes down into it looks like they've got uh back-to-back -back diode protection there so it seems that uh one looks like it's for the voltage range they switch in uh the resistors here and they switch in the relay and all that just for the voltage range, the other one, the direct input um, with the PTC protection and the diode protection is for the millivolt range, obviously. Whereas, you know, on the old school meter, you didn't need any of that relay rubbish or anything. All you needed was, you know, a different range switch position. So this is why you can hear the relay switch if we go between volts and millivolts. So if you compare the original 8008 on the right there to the uh, this new, I guess, Q1, it's not really a replacement for the 8008. It's just uh, designed to meet a different market, and they're very similar. They've uh, the Q1 has the larger um, M205 HRC fuses. The 8008 has those uh, smaller uh, squat ones, which are probably um, harder to get. You know, technically not as good. The MELF input uh, resistors are the same. The same uh, diode uh, protection. Action. And it's probably got the same blob microcontroller. It's got the E squared prom there, um, but it's got the uh, that extra uh, microcontroller chip. Um, so that must be maybe that's like is that like doing the extra bar graph stuff and doing like the, something's got to do the relay switching and things like that. So maybe they might be uh, dual purpose in that because they've got to get those uh, hundred extra LCD segments from somewhere. I'd be surprised if the uh, chipset. Um, has all that. It uses the same buzzer and everything else, so it's a bit bigger. It uses AA batteries, but it's basically crippled by that ridiculous choice of that screen. And these soft buttons are going to put the relay in there. Like, why? I, I just don't get it. It just seems to be a meter that didn't seem to need to be made, really. I mean, the screen just uh, spoils it. I can uh, see that, hey, having the extra non-contact voltage thing uh, would be an additional feature on there. Some people might prefer the uh you know the push buttons to the rain switch and that's fine but nah it's totally let down by the screen imagine if they just you know put the original screen back in there and had the double a batteries it'd last forever it'd be a nice little um upstep in the uh model there and, and if they just put in those extra two current ranges geez it might even be a bit of a killer but you know construction of these things is as what you'd expect for a 25 dollar and a 38 dollar multimeter it's you know it's acceptable for the price so anyway if you like that video please give it a big thumbs up and uh as per the previous video please tell me what you thought of the 4k video and does it actually look uh any better and on 1080p because uh, it should in theory when you upload a 4k video to YouTube uh, YouTube process it at a higher bitrate they process the 1080p version at a higher bitrate apparently and so they give you and deliver a higher quality 1080p than if you just if I just rendered a 1080p from this 4k content and uploaded it anyway catch you next time